So real simple to get to this, just put it on the bench, I'll just take this part off here, just to unwind these two. Sometimes these are normally just screwed in actually, and you just normally undo the screws. But sometimes you get a mower where the screws are behind the stickers, so if you can't, the decal here, if you can't actually see it, sometimes they're hidden behind there, and I'm hoping there's not one under here, because I don't want to have to take this off, because it's all in good tidy order really. So I'm hoping if I take these two parts off, but this will uh, this will just come off, and I can get in to change this recoil really easily. I'm hoping with these two parts now removed, I'm somewhere said that this will lift off, and it does there. Maybe just to catch at the front somewhere, something that I'm missing, or does it just pull up? I think there might be something at the front here. I don't want to force anything, but uh, I think it's just set in the plastic and it actually just pulls up like that. A little bit different to what I've seen before is this. It's not actually screwed in, but there's actually a, a catch there. But I can actually get to the parts I need to get to to remove this and actually replace this starter up. I would ideally like to just get that off. Aha, there we go. I'll just pull that through there. You can see these colours actually make a massive difference to the appearance of these mowers. So if you've got one that goes on it, then fit it on. It's actually still got the Briggs and Stratton badge on the top of here. So there's three parts to remove, one here, one at the other side, one round here, just a spanner, normal spanner will do that, we'll take that off. One thing to note if you when you put this back together, make sure that this uh, this lead that goes to the spark plug turn that off for good measure. We'll just make sure that this actually sits in this notch here. Sometimes you can trap this. Actually, uh, I've had these actually being cut before where they won't actually start because they've worn so thin. So we'll set these three parts off here, one on each side and one at the front. We'll have a look at this uh, this starter row. We've got those all removed now. This should pull off. Actually, the uh, oil dipstick's going to come off with this one as well. I could have taken that out really, but it's not a big problem. As you can see here, we've actually uh, got this cover off now. We can see where this rope is. Just a little tip here you see these actual plastic poles that actually pull out of here. I've actually had a mower that somebody said had no compression before, and actually, when you pulled it, you see how they pop out? It didn't pop out. I actually sprayed it with WD-40 and popped out and I put the recoil cover on and the mower fired up. So I went from having a, a mower that I thought had no compression to having a perfectly working, 100% working mower. So that's something to look out for. If you pull the cord, it feels like it's got no compression. It's really easy to pull. It's probably because these aren't actually engaging. So just a little tip anyway. Um, I'm actually going to get that now. What I'm going to do is this. Is I'm actually going to pull this right out and I'm actually going to clamp it. The easiest way to do this is to actually pull this out and get this all lined up where the actual cord comes out. This is actually a, a detailed video of how to do this on the Repair and Lawnmowers for Profit DVD. This is just a quick video I'm filming, but just get it pulled right out so everything's lined up. I'm actually going to clamp this down and just take this whole cord out. Very simple to do, should only take a couple of minutes. So I've actually clamped this now, obviously there's a lot of tension in this spring, so I've just clamped that down. I'm going to unhook the old rope from inside there and just cut it off. I'm going to pull it back out. A lot of people just stick a screwdriver down the edge of there, but I never like to do that just in case it comes off because it fires back with quite fiercely to be honest. It could uh, things flying at you and things. I'd rather just clamp it down like that. And I've got all the time in the world now to just push this cord back through here. I'll just pull it out with some long nose pliers and I'll cut that off. Just cut that off there. I'll just pull it right out of there. And that's uh, one removed. Of course at the other end we're going to want this aren't we? No point wasting all that so I'll pull that out the other end and we'll uh, thread this new rope through. I actually have a full spool here of uh, starter rope, just recoil starter rope and sometimes people send me questions saying oh, I can't get the tension right on the spring and I, how long do I make the rope? Well if you rewind it as far as you can get it until this rope comes out and clamp it as I've shown you and then actually measure this rope to the same length on your new cut yourself a new piece exactly the same size with a little, little bit extra for tying the knot at each end it should be exactly right because it's in theory it's exactly the same length as you took off and the uh, the spring tension is exactly the same so the answer to the question is to cut it exactly the same length but leave a little bit on each end I'll then just uh, get the lighter keeping it away far enough away from any fuel of course it's open and I'll just burn the end of it really just to make it easy to thread it back through just got a little cheap lighter here. 
does the job. I'll just do that, I'll just nip it off. Just makes a nice seal on the end of it. As you can see it's got a little bit of a point to it as well. And that should thread back through real easy so yeah that's going to push back through this uh, recoil. I'll just do the same at the other end as well and we'll be able to get this uh, pull handle on easily as well. You just get the rope, push it from the outside here, push it straight back through this hole where it came from, just pull it through, just be careful not to move the clamp out of the way. I'm just going to tie a knot or two in there, making sure that the knot sits nicely in these uh, gaps, you don't want anything catching. I'm going to pull that tight with some pliers and I'm going to pull that back through here and make sure it's nice and tight. Just pull this back through here, push that in that gap there, make sure it's all nice and tight and everything's uh, out of the way. It's not actually going to catch anything, make sure it pushes right in, don't catch on anything. And then we'll uh, just put this back on. An important little thing I do as well is I always put the other end back on first because what you find you might do is just let go of the clamp, put it back on this uh, mower and if you let it go the spring will actually rewind all this coil right in and you probably have to take it all to bits to get rid of it and you'll probably end up with springs flying about and stuff. So if you just put this end back on, if you remember to so just put this uh, this handle back on, just get some long nose pliers and full, pull that through, put a knot in it, then whatever happens, you know, if you take the clamp off, it'll only wind in and you won't lose all the rope. So definitely put this end on before you put it back on this mower. So we've got this other end on, we've actually got this handle on. What I tend to do now is just put it around my hand here, just so it doesn't wind in too fast. I'll just gently undo this... Uh, this clamp here and it'll just actually start to tighten up but of course it'll actually hold on my hand so it won't actually tension back just at the minute take this clamp off and what I like to do is just let it go back in nice and slowly it's, this is just returning all this rope inside to the exact position it was in before as you can see there that's how I've changed it over it's all ready to go the springs are working the pull cords are correct length Basically just a case of clamping it in the correct position, burning the ends to get you thread it back through and we'll just pop this back on. And it's another little benefit, I've got a brand new pull card on there, it's something else I can list when I come to list this more as a benefit. All working fine, make sure you check it, make sure these little things are popping out still. It's actually uh, working fine is that. Sometimes I just give them a little bit of spray up with something just to make sure that they're slackened off as well and they're not actually going to stick. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to do the exact reverse, I'll put this back on here. I'm going to tighten all this back up now and we'll uh, put this back together. When you put these back together just start all these off, don't put any of them in tight. Just put them in and just finger tighten them up, make sure you get them all in. There's actually sometimes a little like a uh, heat deflector if you like on the bottom of here that just stops like, any dirt getting in. I think it's more of a, a dirt guard. And this one at the side, make sure that it all goes back together and you get through everything. There's a few little parts that these need to go back through, so just get them all started finger tight first. Tighten them back up, and as I said at the beginning, it's very easy to forget this. Make sure that this lead actually fits in this little notch so you're not trapping anything before you tighten everything up. And there we go, job done. Just pop this back up here. As you can see there, it's got a nice uh, shiny new pull cord on. It certainly looks good when you come to list it as well. Let's take a step back from here, quite sad I know, but it, it does help the appearance of the mower and you can list this as having the new pull cord. It, uh, it really does help, it just uh, saves you having any problems. Some people come from a long way to pick these mowers. I've had people, I'm in, I'm in North Yorkshire, I've had people come from the top of Scotland to pick these up, for even when they've won them for sort of 70 quid. And I don't want them getting home and emailing me saying this is snapped for the sake of a you know, a five minute job, I'd rather just replace it. It wasn't too bad, but it's, uh, it's a nice mower this. It'll just help it uh, last a little bit longer. So that's how I replace the starter rope really. The trick to it is really getting yourself a, a cheap clamp. They're only off eBay, they're only cheap tools. And clamping it so the spring doesn't come back. Uh, thread it back through and basically remember to put this end on. If you forget and it lets go then you're in a bit of trouble. <laughs> so it's really easy to do. And uh, I hope this helps people out if they're looking to replace the, uh, the starter rope on these Briggs and Stratton engines. It's pretty similar on most of them to be honest if you can get them off and... Uh, just pull the card right out and clamp them and you can put another one on. It's not really a difficult repair to do. There is a more detailed video as I've said on the uh, the Repair and Lawn Most for Profit DVD. This was just a quick one I was doing now but uh, more information on there on these type of engines with Briggs and Stratton and repairing and servicing your own Lawn Most for Profit. Please visit that website repairandlawnmostforprofit.com. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again shortly.